I first want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this very important festival, celebrating strong and powerful women. As a child, I never would have imagined an organization such as Black Women in Opera dedicated to educating the masses on the value and importance of Black opera history and its artists. I was introduced to the world of opera as a young girl when my grandmother Kathleen Bowen took me to see Madame Butterfly in Baltimore, Maryland. I was immediately drawn to the lavish costumes, the lush sound of the orchestra, and the vibrant soaring voices. I told her I wanted more than anything to be on that stage and experience that magic. She would play opera records at our little home on Woodhaven Avenue. As a black trans child, I had to deal with bullying, taunting, abuse, misgendering, homophobia, transphobia, racism, and depression. As a teenager, my own father would verbally and physically abuse me for years, insisting that I needed to put on a suit and be a man. I tried and I tried and I tried for years to please those around me and be what they wanted me to be, even when that wasn't enough, because it never will be. My family abandoned me and left me homeless. In New York City one summer, I didn't know where I was going to get my next meal. I was harassed and humiliated by police. No one would hire me, not even for a temp job. I had to sleep in parks and sleep in subway stations. By the grace of a kind stranger who generously bought my plane ticket back home to California, I am here before you today. I could have easily become another tragic statistic of a trans woman succumbing to violence, illness, or even worse. Studying opera at CalArts and the San Francisco Conservatory of Music had its own challenges. I would soon find out at just how many doors would remain closed for a trans opera singer of color unless I knocked on those doors loudly and clearly without letting up. Comments like, why do you want to sing a Pamina aria? Wouldn't you like to sing a few spirituals for your recital instead? And who do you think you are transitioning into a new voice? Could be very defeating for a young artist and clearly show what box the status quo thinks you should stay in another form of artistic segregation. I soon found out that I had no choice but to be my own true self because there was not, there is not, and there shall never be another me. I am so thankful that my musical gifts have taken me on stages across the world with the San Francisco Symphony the Gay Men's Courses of Los Angeles, San Francisco and Washington, D.C., Toronto Pride, the Colorado Symphony, and being the first trans woman to sing our nation's anthem at a national sporting event. But as a person of color or a trans person, it is not enough just to be the first to do this and the first to do that. Like the musical scale, we need seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths, and so on. We need to break the monotony of novelty and revolutionize the world of opera. The barriers need to be broken down. Our stories need to be told. Our faces need to be seen. Our voices need to be heard. I often think of how defeated Sissy Aretta Jones and Lillian Avanti must have felt when the Met Opera turned them down because of their race. How undignified and humiliated Marian Anderson must have felt when the hotels and restaurants across America refused to allow her inside 
and how dissatisfied Madame Mary Cardwell Dawson must have felt about the treatment of her community when she was called forth to form the National Negro Opera Company of the 1940s and 1950s that would tour the nation and launch the careers of dozens of Black opera artists. We stand in the shoulders of Marian Anderson, of Shelley Verrett, of Grace Bunbury, of Leontine Price, of Jesse Norman, of, of William Warfield, and many more. It is not enough to know their names. It is not enough to remember their names. Say their names over and over again. Show their faces, play their records, discuss the accomplishments and struggles, pass their stories to the younger generations, lest their legacies fade into obscurity. Just as we stand on the shoulders, we uplift and preserve their legacies. How fortunate are we to have these artists in history that we can stand on their shoulders and be victorious. My name is Brianna Sinclair, and I want to say thank you for allowing me to speak for you all today. And please, please vote.